The endogenous lipid transport pathway also involves the liver. However, this is independent of the gastrointestinal tract. So we are not now dealing with uh, cholesterol and triglyceride transport f coming from dietary sources. This is uh, hepatically derived lipid which is uh, being packaged into the VLDL particles and then transported throughout the body uh, to deliver both triglyceride uh, and to some extent cholesterol to various cells and tissues. So again I need you to think of a factory analogy but in this case this is not um, a single pass uh, type of factory. In this case we have a factory which is capable of taking raw material from circulation. This includes the triglyceride and cholesterol, repackaging this into the transport lipoprotein, in this case very low density lipoprotein or VLDL, packaging this into VLDL particles and shipping it out into circulation to uh, distribute its lipid through to the various cells. It's capable of taking dietary in this particular case the factory being the hepatocytes are capable of taking previously produced triglyceride and cholesterol or producing its own fatty acids triglycerides and even cholesterol and then packaging them into VLDL particles for transport to other cells and tissues so this occurs in a similar fashion to that that we, we described in the exogenous pathway where these delivery trucks uh, or lipoprotein particles are delivering the lipid to the various cells. Primarily in this case it's for energy use not cholesterol transport. So once the triglyceride and some of the cholesterol has been uh, adequately distributed through the tissues these very low density lipoprotein particles have now they've gone through a transition to LDL particles which are very poor in triglyceride content but high in cholesterol. Ideally these LDL particles are then removed from circulation by the liver and the process can start over again with these LDL particles being broken down to their constituent parts and repackaging so that this particular cycle occurs again. This describes the endogenous pathway of lipid transport specific points on the endogenous pathway. So triacylglycerol and cholesterol can be either synthesized in the liver or obtained from uh, circulation, whether that be from colomicron remnants or from adipocyte non-esterified fatty acid liberation. APOC and APOE as well as cholesterol ester are acquired from HDL in circulation. Again, the APOC is required for the activation of lipoprotein lipase, which catalyzes the hydrolysis of triacylglycerol. APOC at some point in the conversion from VLDL to LDL is transferred back to HDL. The remnant particle or uh, more specifically intermediary density lipoprotein or IDL if it contains an APOE it can be taken up directly by the liver via the APOE slash remnant receptors at the liver. However if it is not the APOE is lost again to HDL and the uh, hepatic lipase will continue to act on this intermediary density lipoprotein to liberate even more triglyceride until you have a very cholesterol rich LDL particle. The LDL particle is then removed because of the uh, LDL receptor family which recognizes the ApoB100 as its ligand. This summarizes very briefly the endogenous pathway of lipid transport in our bodies. Next we're going to cover the reverse cholesterol transport pathway.